Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Saturday, October the 23rd, 2021. It's been an incredible couple of weeks for news on the Nikon Z9. Well, it might be Saturday, but the news isn't over. We've got a fresh set of leaks coming from Nikon Rumors, and a majority of these, 80% of them, are from known sources, so Nikon Rumors believes these to be true. The few that are from unknown sources, I'll let you know, but they're not the big ones. I want to take you back to January the 27th, 2020. This is when Canon Rumors provided a detailed set of specifications for the rumored Canon R5. And at the time, we didn't even know if it was going to be called the Canon R5. But one thing that was pretty certain is looking at these specifications, many thought that it was absolutely ridiculous. There's no way that Canon was going to come out with a camera that could do 8K video, 4K 120, IBIS, all this without cropped video full sensor readout with autofocus, everything, uh, and 45 megapixels, et cetera, et cetera. I got a lot of comments saying that this just didn't make any business sense, that there's no way they leapfrog the competition, that this is fake news. Well, I want you to keep that in mind because as time went by, that proved out to be correct. And the only thing that kind of added salt to that was the overheating. Now with the Nikon Z9, things are a little bit different because we've already received a couple of teaser videos, a development announcement on top of the rumors, and the rumors are turning out to be true to the, to the most part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the rumored specifications and I'm going to tell you what's different. Now the first one I want to start off with is that sensor and processor. So we are getting a 45 megapixel sensor and a new processor, but what you want to pay attention to is the 8K video. Now we know that it's going to have 8K video at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second because in one of the teaser videos, Nikon shows this. And it shows us being able to record for at least two hours out in the savanna capturing wildlife. Well, this new rumor from Nikon Rumors says that the Nikon Z9 is going to be able to record, are you ready for this? 8K video, yeah, I know that's not the surprise, but at 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second, pal. Think about that. Think about the amount of data that must pass through. Now, we don't know if this is going to do it in raw or all eye, but still, in all eye, that's a huge amount of data. Now, I have trouble remembering the figure on the R5, but when you're shooting raw, I think it's at least 2.4 gigabits per second at 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second, that's an awful lot of data. That's an awful lot of processing. That's an awful lot of information you're being captured that you're capturing and also storing. So pretty impressive there. So you might be wondering, does slow motion change? Do we get to shoot at faster than 120 frames per second in 4K or 1080? No mention. But if it can do 60 frames per second, I wouldn't be surprised if in 1080 or 4K, we might be able to exceed that 120 frames per second. In fact, based on what I'm hearing about this camera, I'd be surprised if the engineers didn't push it. Oh, and one more thing, that 60 frames per second, it does have a time limit. One hour. That's pretty respectable. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stunned by that. So what else is new? Well, apparently this camera won't have any rolling shutter. No rolling shutter at all. That's what they said, no rolling shutter. But it also says no mechanical shutter. So no rolling shutter, no mechanical shutter, capable of doing 8K up to 60 frames per second. Now, my mind's going all over the place here thinking, could this be a camera that has a global shutter? I don't know. They haven't said so. Nikon Rumors hasn't said anything. Nobody else has said anything. But no rolling shutter? That's a tall order even in 8K. Now, the Canon R5 does a very good job in 8K with very little rolling shutter. So it's definitely possible to do. But to completely break away from the mechanical shutter? Ah, interesting. Now, I'm not saying it does have a global shutter. I just sort of threw that out there wondering. Could potentially this camera have that? All right, now, next settings. So it is going to do 30 frames per second and 16-bit raw. Now, Nikon Rumors did question that a little bit. Over the last couple of months, some had gone back, some rumors had gone back and said, well, we're going to get 20 frames per second, but Nikon Rumors seems to be settling on 30 frames per second. And I'll be honest with you, I think it would be a letdown based on all the other specifications we see in this camera if it can't do 30 frames per second. If it can do 8K video without rolling shutter, I don't see how it can't do 30 frames per second. So it, it's, this is turning out to be one incredible camera. The EVF shoots blackout free at 120 hertz, and according to the latest rumor, 
has a 5 million dot EVF. Now let's talk about autofocus. Now from the last video we can see that it can clearly do vehicle eye detection, it can do motorcycles and it can do cars, but this latest rumor says that it can do planes as well. Planes, trains and automobiles. <laughs> Sounds like a movie. It is a movie, and we're coming up to Thanksgiving, so you probably want to watch that. Miss John Candy. Always liked watching his movies. Always made people laugh. But anyhow, this is not about making people laugh. Let's get back to autofocus. Now, as far as human, animal, and bird eye detection, yes. Uh, now, we saw in the video again that it can do human eye detection quite well in sports. And um, animal and bird eye detection, um, let's just give the rumor that one because, well, if it can do all the other stuff, then, you know, I can't imagine it's going to have trouble doing animal and bird eye detection. So what else can this camera do? Well, based on previous rumors, it has a multi-bleed leaf protector to keep the shutter down when you turn the camera off or remove lenses. The autofocus EV is good to minus 7 EV in low light. So if you're shooting in low light, you're not going to have to worry about um, your autofocus performance. So that's pretty good. And again, it has a new LCD, as you could see from this clip of the first teaser video. It has dual CF Express cards, uh, but I want to skip all this communication stuff in terms of GPS and USB and all that kind of stuff and get to the last two specifications. Now, the weight is um, supposed to be just over a kilogram at 1,020 grams or about 2.2 pounds. This is one of the specifications that is coming from an unknown source, so you know the weight. It might not actually be that weight, it might be a little bit different. But the other element from a known source is, again, on price. Remember when I talked about this just a couple of days ago, that the Nikon Z9 is going to be priced to surprise, and in a positive way. Speculating that this camera won't cost around $6,500 as expected. Remember, the Sony Alpha 1 is $6,499. Canon's flagship 1DX Mark III, a DSLR, $64.99. Nikon is rumored to cost less than the D6. Again, $64.99. Now, I had speculated that perhaps it could go to $59.99. Now, it doesn't mean that. It could go $63.99, $62.99, any combination of real numbers all the way down to zero. And, of course, not down to zero. That would just be silly. But I think $59.99 would really fire a major shot across Canon's bow. Here's their newly announced Canon R3 that hasn't even hit the streets yet. And here comes Nikon saying, yeah, here's our flagship camera. And guess what? $59.99. Eat that. I think that would be very, very powerful. That would be very powerful. And uh, I'd be curious to know what Canon's response would be. I would actually expect probably within a few months of this Nikon Z9 announcement, if all these rumors pan out to be true, we'll get some sort of development announcement. We'll get some sort of noise from Canon about their R1. Because this Nikon Z9 is shaping up to be an incredible camera. Let's just look at some of the specifications. And I know after we've had the R5 and then the Alpha 1, this camera doesn't seem as surprising but when you realize what the technology must do to be able to capture that much data in various lighting conditions process that data send it through the bus and put it onto a recording media it's truly remarkable 45 megapixel camera capable of capturing 8k video at up to 60 frames per second stills 30 frames per second minus 7 ev and low light no mechanical shutter. Uh, what was the other? No mechanical shutter and no rolling shutter? Now, there's a lot missing here still. 8K, is it raw? Is it all I? What kind of video codecs are they using? See, I want to draw you back. I want to take you back once again to the video I did a few days ago, again, talking about what Nikon Rumors had said, and that this camera is going to leapfrog the competition. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be a huge jump over the previous competition. This is just what we used to see generation after generation with cameras. Nikon would come out with a really good camera. Then Canon would come out with a camera next month, and it was slightly better. Then Nikon, then Canon, then Nikon, then Canon. They would leapfrog each other, just like children do leapfrog games in school. It doesn't mean you're going to jump three miles ahead. Now, the Canon R5, that was... That was a Superman leapfrog because based on everything that Canon had done before, it was a huge, it was like they skipped an entire generation. Now, when you compared it to Sony, 
Yes, it was a leapfrog, but it wasn't as much of a gap because Sony had been leading and innovating in mirrorless for some time. But it looks like Nikon is caught up too, and that the Z9 is going to be an extremely powerful camera. Now, I'm not saying that all these rumors are correct, but Nikon seems to have gotten the bulk of them correct based on what we're seeing from three teaser videos already. Now, the first teaser video showed us what the camera looked like and showed us that articulating screen. The second video focused on showing us the camera outside with a 100 to 400 millimeter new Z lens, as well as showing us that it could record in 8K video DCI for up to two hours with no sign of overheating. And of course, the third video showed that, you know what, their autofocus system, it's now one of the best. It can do motorcycles, cars, and humans, of course, in that one area this camera is supposed to excel in, and that's fast action photography. Well, also fast action video as well. I'm really excited by this camera. I really am. I know I don't smile as much in these videos, and I'm trying to be more of myself, because if I was talking to you, I'd be smiling a whole lot more. I love camera talk. I love camera technology. And I, lo I love anywhere where we're seeing innovation, where things are improving our workflow and how we live our lives. And I'm really excited by this camera. It just looks powerful. I was really excited by the Sony a7 IV, but I, I want to say this a little quickly behind the scenes. While I still would like to have the Sony a7 IV as my studio camera, I was just a little bit disappointed. And hear me out here, because maybe you're thinking the same, a little bit disappointed that they didn't improve the speed of the processor. Maybe take the same processor as they put in the Alpha 1. Canon did this with the R6. They took it from the 1DX, 1DX Mark III and put it in the R6. And so you can shoot 30 frames per second. Rolling shutter is very, very minimal. And you've got that faster frame rate. And what that would have allowed us to do with the A7 is faster frame rate in lossless as well, but also significantly reduce that crop in video and I just wish they had done that. I feel like while it's a truly amazing camera, it's a truly a great camera, and if you've got the a7 III, wow, this is so much better, especially that autofocus system. But I think Sony missed an opportunity here to make this just so much better than the R6 and other cameras in its class. They missed a really good opportunity. And I think that's unfortunately what happens sometimes when you're designing a product and you let the bean counters get in and have a little bit more control. You, you let it be designed com by committee. Because I bet you anything, in some of the earlier prototypes of this camera or the design models, they had a faster processor in there. They were able to do video that was either, either uncropped or like the R6 with like a 10% crop, and it had a faster frame rate. Because now we're probably going to have to wait at least another two or three years before we get the A7 V. Anyhow, so let's get back to the Z9 because that's what this is about. What the point I was trying to make with the a7 IV is we had a lot of expectations for that camera. We had a lot of excitement from people who are Canon, Panasonic users, as well as Nikon hopefuls. And I think that the Nikon Z9 is truly going to impress because we have received several teaser videos. And we can see that it's going to perform really, really well. But again, that Cripple Hammer, it's not owned and trademarked by Canon only. Other companies have it. A Nikon could come out and say, well, we're not going to do RAW in 8K, only in 4K, and we're not going to do all I, we're going to do IPB. And I know that sounds absolutely silly, because from everything we're seeing with this camera, the specifications, the development announcement that came shortly thereafter, and of course, all the teaser videos, this is shaping up to be a really amazing camera. And according to rumors, we're supposed to get an announcement this week, Thursday. I'm looking forward to this. I'm, I'm going to watch this one. And um, wow. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I woke up Saturday morning thinking, you know, I'm going to relax, make some coffee. Um, you know, my wife's got to go to work, so I'll play with my son. He wants to play some Halo. And I thought we'd just relax and take it easy because it's eps my watch isn't on, but it's absolutely cold outside. It's about three degrees Celsius or about 39 degrees and definitely not the day to be outside playing around too much. And I saw this news, so up at the crack of dawn again to get you this news and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, but please do me a favor. If you're still watching, go ahead and click subscribe and like. It really does help this channel grow. And you know what? I take it as a pat on the back. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. 
We'll see you again soon.